What's up guys, this is Luke Hill for Kit Guru, and this is the Core i7-7740X. So this is the KB Lake quad-core chip that sits on the LGA 2066 socket, so the X299 platform. And this, quite frankly, is a very bizarre CPU, and we're going to go into details on exactly why that is. So I've got my cheat sheet in front of me, you're going to have to excuse me, but I can't remember all of these details off the top of my head. So the Core i7-7740X is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, so obviously it uses Intel hyperthreading. It operates at a base frequency of 4.3 GHz with a turbo boost frequency of up to 4.5 GHz. And in our testing, it actually operated at 4.5 GHz on all cores, depending on the workload, of course, but for the majority of the time, 4.5 GHz across all cores. So it's a pretty quick chip, there's no denying that. Uh, the TDP is 112 watts, uh, 16 PCIe lens, dual channel DDR4 support up to 2666 megahertz, 8 megabytes of level 3 cache, and if you're thinking, hold on Luke, that sounds quite familiar, then you'll be correct, well done. This is basically a Core i7-7700K put onto the Enthusiast platform with its iGPU chopped off. There are other subtle differences, but there's not much more to say about it than that. And that might be a sticking point for some people. It might be the greatest thing since sliced bread for other people. So just like the Core i7-7700K I have here in my left hand, this Core i7-7740X is a quad-core hyper-threaded CPU, as we've already identified. So what are the differences between the two? Because they both retail, according to Intel, at $339, US or about £320 street price in the UK. Well, number one, you can see the size is the difference. Obviously, the 7740X sitting on the LGA 2066 socket is a physically larger package. It has more pins on the back, as we can spin this around, and I will show you. More pins on the back, it sits on the larger socket, so obviously more data can be transferred, more interaction points, and being on the X299 platform, it can, in general, benefit from the beefy power delivery solutions that are used for the X299 motherboards, irrelevant of the cooling uh, controversy we've seen recently. They are very well-built power delivery solutions, even if the cooling is uh, somewhat questionable on some of the motherboards. So what else? Are the, what are the other differences? Well, of course, you've got a larger heat spreader compared to the 7700K, and as we'll see in our testing, that's actually good for thermal performance. And I say that with apprehension, because while it's good for thermal performance, as we've seen with Skylake X and Cable Lake X, film forms isn't great in general. It's just good compared to the 7700K, which is far from high praise. Let's be perfectly honest about that. Uh, one of the other differences is the 7700K, you get the integrated GPU, so the Intel HD 630 graphics. The 7740X, you do not. Now, in itself, that's not a problem. Most enthusiasts probably aren't going to be using the integrated graphics, because they're not very high performance, they'll probably use a discrete GPU. Perhaps they're using the integrated graphics to help with their quick sync streaming or quick sync encoding, but in general, they're not used. However, when Intel chops off the integrated graphics, which is something that undoubtedly has value to a number of people, perhaps not significant value, but some level of value, so when Intel chops that off and it charges the same price for the 7740X, that leaves a sour taste in people's mouths, and understandably so. So another subtle difference is that the 7700K is actually rated for DDR3 low voltage and DDR4 memory support, uh, depending on the motherboards. So you can either use DDR4 up to 2400 megahertz uh, natively, or DDR3 up to 1600 megahertz natively. And of course, with high-end premium Z170, Z270 motherboards, you can use higher speed memory kits or in the 4000 megahertz range. By comparison, the 7740X ups the default memory support with DDR4 to 2666 megahertz, but it does not support DDR3 at all. And that's not a problem. Um, increase in native memory support, great thing, no complaints there. Another of the differences is the 100 megahertz base frequency boost for the 7740X versus the 7700K. So the 7700K base frequency is 4.2 gigahertz. This one, 7740X, 4.3 gigahertz. And actually in our testing, the 7700 100K in its default uh, Intel defined turbo boost standard uh, procedures and operations was operating at 4.4 gigahertz all core load, whereas the 7740X was 4.5 gigahertz all core load. So it is slightly faster, very marginal, but it is slightly faster. So one of the other differences is actually the TDP. 
the 7700K is rated 91 watts, whereas the 7740X is 112 watts. And while TDP is only loosely uh, joined to power consumption, of course, this means that you need more cooling to keep the 7740X happy as opposed to the 7700K. So that's essentially what the TDP difference is saying. So now that we've highlighted some of the differences between these two very, very similar chips, albeit on different platforms, let's look at the, some of the performance differences. So focusing first on Cinebench, which is everybody's favorite when it comes to CPU testing, the 7740X is 1.9% faster than the 7700K at stock. A whole 1.9%. And we don't usually go to one decimal place, but we had to use one decimal place because the values of that device have been rounded to a level which should uh, not have distinguished them very well. So 1.9% faster for the 7740X. Compare that. So the 7740X versus Ryzen 7 1700, which is also around about the same price, around about 300 pounds in the UK. Ryzen 7 1700 with its eight cores and 16 threads is actually 45% faster at stock in Cinebench. We look at Cinebench single core performance, that's where the 7740X really shines. So this is an absolute beast when it comes to lightly threaded tasks because the core frequency is just so high. So in our Cinebench single thread testing, it's actually 33% faster for the 7740X versus the Ryzen 7 1700. And that's driven by frequency as well as the really high performance architecture used on these Intel Cable Lake and Cable Lake X CPUs. If we switch focus onto Handbrake, the 7740X compared to the 7700K is 1.5% faster at stock, a whole 1.5%. And that's repeatable, it's not marginal error, it is repeatable. It's just not very significant, quite frankly. Compared to the Ryzen 7 1700, the 77 40X is, unsurprisingly, slower in handbrake, which is very well multi-threaded. So the Ryzen 7 1700 is actually 27% faster at stock than the 7740X. Moving on to X265 encoding, the 7740X is 2.4% faster than the 7700K at stock. So nothing significant again. It is faster, but it's not significant. However, the price is the same compared to the 7700K, so slightly faster at the same price. Fine, no problems there. Great. Comparing to the Ryzen 7 1700, the Ryzen chip is actually 17% faster in X265 encoding than the 7740X, and this is, of course, driven by its eight threads and, sorry, eight cores and 16 CPU threads. So if we move our focus slightly onto power consumption, um, the Core i7, the Cable Lake, and the Cable Lake X chips, they're not bad. They don't demand uh, ridiculous numbers through the VRM or through the power supply from the wall. They're pretty decent when it comes to power consumption, well below 200 watt system-wide power consumption. However, so is Ryzen 5 1600X at stock, and so is Ryzen 7 1700 at stock. And when we look at the performance per watt figures, so using Cinebench performance and dividing it by the system power draw at the wall in the Cinebench run, the Core i7 7740X actually performs quite poorly. So in our metric, it gets a score of 6.7, whereas the 7700K is 7.2, and the Ryzen 7 1700 is 9.3, and of course higher is better. So that's quite a big difference. Um, quite frankly, this chip has been pushed quite far, so the power consumption is obviously going to go up because the frequency has been pushed far, and it somewhat tapers off on the efficiency curve. However, if you're after frequency and you don't care about efficiency, then fine, this, this metric is just not important to you. Gaming performance, the 7740X, just like the 7700K, its cousin, shall we say, is absolutely superb, fantastic. So in high refresh rate gaming situations, it's pretty much the fastest CPU you can get to game in. Uh, 4K and 1440p, where the GPU is under higher stress, it's still pretty much the fastest you can get, although of course the margins are very tight at those higher resolution gaming scenarios. Put simply, if you want the fastest game in CPU, and you aren't doing streaming or any other heavy demanding computational work in the background, the Core i7 7700K and by extension the 7740X are superb choices for high refresh rate gaming where you really do need the CPU to push the GPU to the limit. And now we get on to thermal performance. So the temperatures, they just, quite frankly, they weren't very good. So they were pushing comfortably towards the 70 degrees Celsius point when overclocked. And that's just, it's not great. The power consumption there was not particularly high, so it, there's no reason they should be operating at such a high uh, temperature. Same, the, the stock clock temperatures under load were not great. They were better than the 7700K, 
However, that's not really very good praise because the 700K had an awful power thermal solution for for a quad core chip, quite frankly, or for any enthusiast overclocking chip. It was just not very good. And the 7740X is more of the same. Of course, large heat spreader, large surface area. It is slightly better than the 7700K, but it's still not good. It's still nothing compared to Ryzen. It's still not good compared to Broadwell E with the large heat spreaders. It's quite frankly quite poor and it's not great for enthusiasts. And we really hope this is something that Intel will fix in the future because we know, quite frankly, that the TIM is the problem. Uh, people have been delayed in their 7700Ks, which of course, by extension, means the 7740X is likely to show similar benefits. And when you deal with the 7700K, you can drop the temperature by 20, 30 degrees by significant margins, very, very significant margins. So we really do hope that this is addressed in the future, that Intel goes back to the drawing board and the thermal solution and gives enthusiasts, quite frankly, what they want. They want better temperature numbers, better thermal performance. That's all we ask for. And now if we get on to the point of summarizing. So clearly the primary competitor for the 7740X is the 7700K, somewhat confusingly, yes. And of course, the Ryzen 7 1700, which is also, as we already said, around 300 pounds in the UK. So these are the primary competitors. And it's an interesting situation that Intel is actually competing with itself. So its high-end platform is competing with its mainstream platform when there's very little difference between the CPU. And quite frankly, this is just bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. Being perfectly blunt, the 7740X does not belong on Intel's high-end desktop platform. The 7700K was doing a stellar job at carrying the mainstream platform forward. It's a fast, high-performance chip, no problems, and it's on a very cost-effective platform with dual-channel memory support. No problems with the, Z, with the Z270 platform and the 7700K. However, taking a 7700K, chopping it up a little bit, adjusting a few things under the hood, not really making all that much difference, quite frankly, and then sticking it on an X299 platform with motherboards that start at least £100 more than Z270 alternatives, that just kills the value perspective in one fell swoop. So the value perspective just goes completely out the window when you spend at least 220 to 250 pounds on an X299 motherboard. And the second you put this Kabelik X chip in there, you are disabling a number of features. You are wiping out half of the DIMM slots because you can't take eight DIMMs and it's only dual channel memory support. You are wiping out a number of the PCIe slots or a number of the X16 slots ability to actually run at X16 because you only have 16 PCIe lens in total. You don't get Turbo Boost Max 3.0 support which you do in some of the higher end Skylake X chips. You also quite frankly don't need the strong power delivery solution that is implemented on these X299 motherboards of course for the higher core count Skylake X chips. So there's just waste left, right and center when we're talking about putting Kabelik X with an X299 motherboard. From a value perspective, it makes very, very little sense other than people who are really enthusiastic about Intel's upcoming 12 to 18 core Skylake X chips, but they need a system now. So if you need a system now, you do not want to switch motherboards when the 12 to 18 core chips come out, Kabelake X is a decent option. But even then, we would say, quite frankly, it makes little sense because if your workload now is going to benefit from those 12 to 18 core chips in the future, Spend $50 extra, maybe 40, 50 quid extra, and just get the Core i7 7800X, which is the 6 core 12 thread Skylake X chip. So, while this chip may make sense in some respects to people looking to upgrade to one of the higher core count Skylake X models in the future, we would still argue that it's just a terrible, terrible purchase in some respects, even for those people. If you plan to sell this chip in a few months when you upgrade to your 12 to 18 core Skylake X chip, the market for secondhand buyers of this might be somewhat limited to say the least and that's simply because of the motherboard situation you buy a 7700k and you want to repurpose it to somebody who just wants a 7700k they can buy a 50 pound lga 1151 motherboard if they really want to if you want to put it in a HTPC, a home server a friend or family members just general web browsing or media creation PC that doesn't do gaming, doesn't need overclocking. You can buy a 50, 60, 70 pound motherboard and it will operate perfectly fine. Even if you want to put this 7700K in your next gaming system, once you've gone up to your 12 to 18 core Skylake X chip, you can spend 120 to 150 quid and get a really good Z270 motherboard with gaming features. Whereas with the 7740X, your starting point for X299 motherboards is 220 pounds. There's a significant difference. That's the difference between buying a nice SSD for your next gaming system 
and not. It's a significant difference. The lack of iGPU is also disappointing and it limits the upgrade possibility after you've retired the 7740X in some respects. With the 7700K, you could happily take the chip, turn it into a HTPC, as we've already said, perhaps a headless home server, which only needs uh, basic graphics for uh, general purpose use from time to time, up again into the GUI of the operating system of the server. You can't do any of that with the 7740X. You simply cannot do any of the basic computational tasks without using a GPU. And then that adds to the cost of an already expensive platform driven by expensive X299 motherboards. So quite frankly, we think this Core i7 7740X is a really tough sell on Intel's enthusiast platform. When we first learned about KB Lake X going onto the enthusiast platform, we were somewhat excited. As we know, four cores on the high-end desktop platform is nothing new. Intel were doing this in the Sandy Bridge E and the Ivy Bridge E era, and they had great success in some respects. Four cores is not a problem. We know it's great for gaming. But when it's simply four cores, 16 PCIe lanes, dual channel memory support, when it's basically a 7700K, some of the features disabled, and a slight frequency boost put onto the high-end desktop platform, that doesn't make sense. If this was a 7700K with the iGPU disabled, with more PCIe lanes, with quad channel memory support, with something that actually made it a worthwhile upgrade or a worthwhile alternative to a 7700K, this would be a good chip. However, it is not that. It's a questionable buy. The value perspective is just not there. There are very limited scenarios where people will use this. Overclocking is one of those limited scenarios because the overclocking performance is absolutely fantastic. We hit 5 gigahertz with ease. We run 5.1 gigahertz uh, through our entire test suite without any problems whatsoever. We didn't test with Prime95 or Prime95 AVX based workload because they're just very, very stressful. And if you need Prime95 stability, you're going to have to tweak further. If you need AVX stability, you have to tweak further with Prime. Uh, but that all depends on your situation. However, overclock performance is great. You can expect perhaps two, 300 megahertz better than the Core i7 7700K. Of course, that depends on the luck of the silicon lottery, to say the least. But the overclocking performance is absolutely superb. So you're the type of user who needs all-out frequency on a quad-core chip. This is a great choice. It's still not great value, though. So there we have it. It was a nice idea by Intel to put quad cores onto the high-end desktop platform and lower the entry cost from the CPU point of view for prospective buyers. However, we don't think it's been a particularly sensible move. We think uh, some other differentiation point from the mainstream cheaper platform of the Core i7 7700K would have been sensible, like more PCIe lanes, like quad-channel DDR4 support. We think Ryzen 7 1700, at basically the same price and a significantly lower platform cost, is a very tough competitor to the Core i7 7740X for people who are interested in prosumer uh, applications or multi-threaded applications. We think the 7700K is a far smarter choice for gamers because the 100 or so pounds saved on platform cost can be buried straight into the GPU, which will get you better gaming performance in turn. We think the 7740X is a really tough sell has a few niche use cases. It has superb overclocking performance. The thermals are slightly better than the 7700K because of the larger heat spreader, but they're still not great in general. It has the benefit over the 7700K of upgradability. So you can upgrade to a 6, an 8, a 10, a 12 to 18 core Skylake X GP CPU in the future if you deem it sufficient, necessary. Um, it might not improve your game performance because as we've said, the 7700K and the 7740X are about as good as you can get for gaming CPUs, but we just think the value is not there with the Core i7-7740X, and we would advise people looking at buying the Core i7-7740X to save £100 and get the 7700K and a nice Z270 motherboard, or if you have heavily multi-threaded tasks, look at Ryzen options. Alternatively, if you are one of the upgraders who thinks the 7740X is a smart buy for now because you can buy a 12 to 18 core Skylake X chip in the future, we would still suggest that you wait just a few more weeks and see what AMD will be bringing to the table with their high core count Threadripper models. So there we have it, 7740X, perfectly good chip in, in isolation, but a very tough sell on an expensive platform compared to the mainstream Z270 platform and the cost-effective, fast 7700K. Thanks for watching. I'm Luke Hill with KitGuru. Please do let us know in the comments what you think about the Core i7-7740X. Maybe you can tell us your use case of why I'm completely wrong, why this is the best chip ever, and it makes perfect sense. I'd be keen to see 
what your reasons for that are. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you dislike it, click dislike and tell us why. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe. And make sure you head to the Kick Guru website to see the full written analysis with more details and more charts onto the, on the Kick Guru website. Luke Hill for Kick Guru. Thanks.